Tonight, we are all geniuses. <laughs> You're a genius, I'm a genius, we're all geniuses. There are many, many very happy households around the world celebrating the genius in the house who decided to take a big stake with Tesla and to stick with it. Congratulations to all of us. All right, no, Larry's not here tonight because this is Larry's not Friday off because tomorrow he'll be on and we'll be discussing what Kathy Wood has to say about this week in review. I mean, she's looking at more, you know, the overall markets, the overall economy, but uh, don't, don't miss that one tomorrow around noon. Okay, we're all geniuses. We just agreed to that. Everybody, yes, we, we, we're 100% in agreement, but we are nowhere not even close to being done. No, 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 no. This is going to be multiple times bigger than what it already is. It's going to be a double for sure over the next 12 months, even from these new highs. Now, I want to just take a break here and say that I am not saying that anyone should ever make an investment based on what I say on this channel or what my uh, various co-hosts and the people that I interview on this channel say. But I do want to reiterate the foundation stone of this channel. We are partial here to the fundamentals and the sentiment around Tesla. The company, the investing community, that type of sentiment, those kinds of fundamentals. However, we do not ignore the economy. We don't ignore the market macro. And we even give the occasional nod to the technical an analysis on the stock. That's how we see it. Okay, we're not somebody who's uh, some of these channels who are focused on one little small thing. We try to look at the overall picture and bring you the overall picture from lots and lots of experts. All right. Well, based on that methodology, I've been predicting 350 by the end of the year was likely. Well, we kind of passed that in spades. I've also was predicting that we'd be at the all-time high stock price of 411 by the end of January or early February. And the way things are going right now, because in the after hours, last time I checked, we're at 395, we might hit that 411 Tuesday, but we might not. We could also fall back. 400 might be a bridge too far. We could have a, a consolidation. All bets are off on those predictions that I've been making or will continue to make if and when FSD unsupervised happens. And the near-time reality of that seems to be the main thing that has caused the stock to go crazy. Folks are getting out ahead of that news now that it seems to be so close. You've also heard on this channel maybe 20 times I've said that the 2021 all-time high was a combination. When we hit that three years ago, three years ago we were at this level, that was a combination. What took place that time? I'm, the, I'm one of the few who say it this way. I, maybe I'm the only one who says it this way. I saw it at the time as a combination of the macro stock market being at risk on, heavily risk on. There was a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for anything that people thought might be you know, an exciting tech company or whatever. And there was a, a, a mad rush to get into those stocks. And then also the assumption that RoboTaxi was like this close. And I've been saying, again, I, I don't know how many times I've said this over and over again, to get back to all-time high, we needed both of those things to happen again. And guess what? Here we are. We've got a risk-on stock market for sure. And we've got the all-time, we've got the, um, uh, the robo-taxi seemingly uh, right at the edge of taking place. So when we have this combination we should really be at double. You may remember some of my shows where I've talked about it. I've even had thumbnails that I've said we should be at 800. Well, we should be at 800 because the company is twice as large as it was at that time. Now, the reason we aren't at double right now is because the recent earnings haven't been strong enough to get us there. But by the second quarter, third quarter earnings, we should be there. So the $700 that I'm predicting by the end of next year, probably even higher than that, is in the bank. So now what? Okay, so what are the new realities that are impacting the stock right now? Because the company's not the same as three years ago. The economy's not the same as three years ago. The president of the United States is not going to be the same as three years ago. There's so many things that are happening 
that are going to be impacting the stock differently. So let's look at a, a, a number of things here that I think you should be paying attention to as we go forward from these very high points. Number one, Elon Musk's Elon Musk is now the first buddy of the White House. This is a big deal. It's worth 100 points, apparently. But 50 of those, I believe, were related specifically to the RoboTaxi regulation clearance expectations. But also, we've got new investors getting introduced to the Elon and Tesla story because of his high profile at the White House and the people and things that, are, that he's being involved with, as well as the entire Republican establishment and the and the folks who vote Republican are paying way more attention to Elon. You've heard me, heard me say this over and over again. So I think this is important, something to really pay attention to going forward. Number two, the version 13, and by the way, these are kind of in the order of importance, that I, how I see them. Number two, the version 13 released last week was critical and multiple dozens of videos showing incredible results. This is having a big impact and will probably continue to have a big impact as even better uh, videos come out as 13.3 as and 0.4 and 0.5 get released. Number three, this Friday was Options Friday. Uh, we probably saw a lot of options action. You could see at the end, there was, you know, considerable exit. By the way, though, it continued in the after hours. So it isn't all about the options. Trust me, you wouldn't have seen this after hours activity going up another $5 if it was all about the options. Number five, NVIDIA is a bit out of favor right now. I think a lot of the action, a lot of the folks who were the play, more of the players had moved out of Tesla and into NVIDIA over the last year. I've talked about that a few times. Well, NVIDIA was down today, a couple and a half bucks. So I think there's a real chance that some of that NVIDIA money is now coming back into Tesla as Tesla being the next NVIDIA. NVIDIA was the next. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Number six, retail investors are they're trying to find some dry powder. They're running around the house looking in the, in the uh, sofa, see if they can find some quarters. Um, you know, it is uh, a time when retail investors who've been excited about Tesla all along are saying, is there any place I can get a few more bucks to put into the stock? I think that is having an impact this week, and I think it will continue to have a, uh, an impact going forward. Number seven, multiple analyst upgrades. And I, I've been saying all week, I think it was Bank of America actually testing FSD and then commenting on Optimus that is leading the current round of analysts expression by them saying these things they've got other analysts and and other institutional investors and others that have taken a second look and they're going okay we, we can see what we're talking about here now this was related to it number eight noted billionaires making very specific decisions on their various bod podcasts about their involvement in the stock so you had brad gerstner famously talking about his billion dollar investment. You've got Chris Camillo saying that he was not planning to invest in Tesla any more than he already was invested until Optimus came out. And all of a sudden he's like, nope, I got to get in now. This kind of stuff, I'm sure, impacted a lot of people's decisions to put more money into the, into the uh, stock this last week. Number nine, Danny Moses taking off his short. The king of shorts has taken off his short on Tesla. That's huge. And I think that had something to do with what you're seeing. Number ten, by the way, and by the way, the short, uh, uh, the amount of short right shorts right now in Tesla is only at two percent, which is shockingly low. It's more like in line with what you expect from Mag Seven stocks. Number ten, momentum creates its own momentum. Never lose sight of that. Right now, part of this is people. They're you know, it's not just FOMO. FOMO is a different thing. We'll talk about FOMO a little bit more in a minute. It's not just FOMO. It's actually the momentum itself is generating people to go, okay, I need to, you know, it's, I call it more of a bandwagon effect than a, than a FOMO effect. There's, I think those are two different things. Number 11, the index funds and others like that, uh, other kinds of funds are underweight. And so there's, I think there's already been some of those folks that are plowing some money in because they need to get up to at least equal weight, maybe even to overweight. All right. Now, 
Another list, Randy. <laughs> One list is enough. No, I got two lists tonight. As we go into the year end and into January, will this rally continue? Well, here are the things that I think are going to determine whether the rally continues. So I got another list for you. Here we go. Historically, we've all seen this movie before. <laughs> we saw it in 2019 to 2021. So it is very likely that we are only on the first leg of this rally. In fact, given the Optimus and Robotaxi coming, we're talking about a rally that'll make uh, the 2019 to 2021 rally look like, uh, you know, kind of a an, an, an old movie from the 20s instead of a brand new movie from the 24s. This 20, these 20s. Yeah, that's right, from the 20s to the 20s. Anyway, no, so no, this is this is like, going to be the rally of all time. And we're talking about, as you know, many people predicting that the, the, the 400 level today, we're looking at a six times number within two years, within three years, six times current levels. And that's not me. I mean, yeah, I might agree with the number, but we got Kathy Wood, we've got, uh, uh, you know, just Ron Barons. I mean, all these people making the predictions about where we're going next. Number two, massive catalysts are coming and unknown catalysts are coming. Both of those, right? We got some known catalysts that are going to be happening over the, just over the next 90 days, over the next 120 days. And then we've got unknown catalysts. There are things that are going to happen in the next 90 to 120 days that we have no idea. They'll just pop up out of the blue and they might be negative catalysts. All right, so massive cat catalysts. But for the most part, these catalysts are what are going to propel us to that 700 plus level. Number one, I mean, sorry, did I say number one, number three? The minute that FSD unsupervised becomes a thing, the stock goes to 500 or more. I mean, it may be at 500 by that time, so then it'll go to 700 or more. I mean, this will have a massive, this will not be sell on the news. <laughs> Once FSD unsupervised is, is stated, uh, it, it, you know, the numbers are going to be crazy. Number four, the earnings, the earnings call in January could be epic. I am, it's like a Christmas present coming late January. I want to say 24th. What, what's that? 20 is the 20th, the inauguration. I think the 20th is the inauguration. So it's the 22nd. Uh, it's, it's that week anyway, same week. So um, that's going to be incredible. Should be a, a great earnings call. Number five, likely surprises in earnings call. We talked about this earlier today. Let me restate it. We're going to probably see a, a very big surprise for energy. Number one, it's going to be bigger than people are expecting. Number two, we're going to see Bitcoin profits, about a billion dollars, probably get taken. And we're going to see uh, profits released from FSD complete. Profits that have been building up because we weren't able to take all of those problems. We weren't able to realize them from a bookkeeping standpoint. And I think we're talking about maybe billions of dollars of profit in the fourth quarter from the fact that FSD would be complete and therefore we can take the rest of our, at least almost all of the rest of those profits. That's gonna be huge. Then you've got increased uptake of FSD. As we get these better and better videos, as we get people that are testing it because Elon allows you to test it now when you get the car for a couple of months or whatever, the uptake numbers are probably going to be significantly higher. That's going to impact margins. Number six, the inauguration and the first 10 to 100 days of this new administration will be poten potentially stimulative to Tesla stock just because of the uh, attachment to Elon. If, that, if, if we're getting great headlines about what's happening, about the things that are being done, um, and maybe there's going to be some bad headlines along the way too. You know, some people are pretty unhappy about the conversations right now around Social Security and Medicare. They got to change them. They got to be fixed. I don't know what that's going to look like. I put out a lot of suggestions on this channel and on X. I've got ideas about what I think should be done. You've probably got ideas about what you should be, think should be done, but it's got to be fixed by 2032. It's going to go bankrupt and they're going to reduce the amount that everybody gets anyway, but it won't be reducing it for the next generation or the next generation after that. It'll be reducing it for people that are getting a check now. So it's got to be fixed. This is the perfect time to fix it. All right. Number six, number seven, it's almost background noise at this point, but the refinery, the Shanghai mega factory, Juniper are all likely in quarter, the first quarter. And maybe sooner for Juniper, might be this month. 
But all of those are coming right away. Do I think any do I think any one of those three are going to move the stock very much? Well, you know, I'd say Juniper might give it another 10, but we're so used to 20. Uh, 10 will seem like, well, it must be for some other reason. <laughs> all right, number eight, FOMO. Okay, the FOMO is a real thing. All right, that's a little different than bandwagon. And FOMO, of course, is fear of missing out. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people. And they, rightly so. This is real FOMO. This is not oh, FOMO that doesn't, I mean, if a stock is going to go six times in the next two to three years, I guess you'd want to get on board before that happens. And it's not too late. That's the cool thing. A lot of time with FOMO, people are buying in and then they're, they're upside down for a very long time before the event actually happens. All right. Number nine, institutional investors will be playing catch up. They'll be playing catch up in December. They're going to be playing more catch up in January. The institutional investors are going to have to get on board uh, for all, all for every single reason that we've already talked about. And number 10, the analysts will start changing their price targets and their earnings expectations. And those things will have, they'll continue, those will continue to have an impact. As we saw this week, again, I believe the Bank of America note was one of the big things this week. All right. So having said all that, my two long lists, my forecast don't change. I'm not changing anything. I think we might hit 411 before year end. It's possible. That's Brian Wong. He continues to believe that. Or we might bounce off of $400 for a while, even if we're at 395 tonight. Even if we open on Monday at 395 or 400, we might, that might be it. We might come down. Or we might go right to 411. I don't know. We could go beyond that. We could be at 450. It's really hard to know at this point because of all the 20 things, 21 things that I just listed. But I believe that we're really probably getting close to the top here. And we're probably going to be a little flatter in January, waiting for the numbers and waiting for the earnings call, et cetera, et cetera. And then after the earnings call and after the Juniper is out and all these things happen, yeah, maybe, uh, of course, I've been saying for months and months, 450 by the end of January into February. All right. So that's where I think we're going to be. Now, <laughs> oh yeah so we might go to 500 instead maybe i'll be low and maybe we go to 500 the uh you know it's it, 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 we, it's very hard to know when a stock is going like this where it's going to settle down all right we do know that james stevenson today gave me this report that is why i put that thumbnail up is that today was actually the all-time high the all-time high market cap yes we passed 1.25 trillion dollars in value that is what the market cap was back on, in, on november whatever day that was i forget now whatever day it was that we were at 411 that market cap that day was 1.25 trillion and we passed that number today so this is actually the all-time high in terms of market cap all right i ran a poll I, I just thought I'd, I, I ran a bunch of polls. If you're on X, you know I, I run polls all the time. I love to run these polls. Um, I thought it was fun to, to, to tell you about this one. Affordable? What What is? What is the affordable vehicle? What is it going to be? I got all these people all over X that think it's going to be this, and they think it's going to be that, and they're having these arguments back and forth about what is this thing going to actually look like, and it looks into the percentages. 27.8% think it's going to be a hatchback based on the Model 3, Model Y kind of, you know, look. 36.1% think it's just going to be a stripped down Model 3. 23% thinks, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. First, the 27.6 is going to be a four-vehicle passenger cyber cab. So it'll be the cyber cab with the, with the butterfly wing doors. So that's 27.8%. Think that it's going to be that, but it'll be a, a four-seater with the steering wheel and pedals, of course, and all that. 27.8, over 25%. Now, 36%, a bigger number, think it's going to be a stripped down model. I mean, sorry, it'd be a hatchback. A hatchback based on the Model 3, roughly. Then you've got a similar percent, 23%, that think it'll be a stripped down Model 3. And then finally, 12% think there's no such thing. There's never going to be a 2.5 vehicles. So I thought that was interesting that there's so much difference of opinion out there. All right. This is Randy Kirk. By the way, hit like and subscribe and notify and all that jazz. Buy your Cybertruck bottle opener. 
uh, for sure that information is down below in the in the des description. Um, and uh, Brian Wong comes on tonight, later tonight. You do not want to miss this one. He and I talk about what is Tesla going to do in 2025? In 2025, what are they going to do to spend all the money that's coming in, all this free cash flow? And what do they need to do? What do they need to build? What are they going to start? I Fascinating. I think you'll love what Brian and I came up with. And that's about uh, 745 California time. All right. Let me talk to you now. Um, yeah, okay. So let's talk about the economy real quick. We had revolt, we had credit info coming in tonight. What are the consumer credit? What's happening with consumer credit? Okay, it went up 4.5%. Revolving credit increased at an annual rate of 13.9%. Non-revolving credit increased at an annual rate of 1.1. So that was good, but revolving credit, credit cards and whatnot. 13.9%. Now, this man, I mean, that's really big. This massive increase probably is likely, at least in part, we've had two months of extremely low numbers. So one month does not a trend make. I think if we look those three months together, we'd say it looks like a nothing burger. So we'll keep an eye on this because we got to, you know, see what, what, what's going to, this could be a problem downstream. All right. I have uh, repeated ad nauseum that we are due for a correction in the stock market, the equity market, but the correction never comes. <laughs> yeah, I, I always correct. I'm always right. It just takes a lot longer, says Elon Musk. Well, in, the, in this case, we're talking about, uh, you know, guessing about when the correction is going to come. All right. There are plenty of folks smarter than me that believe that there's going to be a 10 to 20 percent correction, probably a 20 percent correction at this point. It won't have anything to do with the fundamentals of the macro economy, although some kind of negative news could create kind of the run, you know, okay, we got to, let's take our profits and get the, get the heck out of here. Um, but there are plenty of people that think we're going to, we're going to see something. Having said that, the equity markets, if the equity markets dropped 20% and Tesla dropped 30%, it wouldn't even be a very big deal at this point. We just look forward to the recovery to come. I mean, if Tesla went back to 300 right now, then it just put us back to where most people would have been very happy to be in December of 2024 anyway. Anyway, this is not a prediction that we're going to have a 20%. I just think it makes sense. I think it's a factor to take into consideration. May not happen. May not happen until next summer. May not happen at all. Uh, and it might only be 10%, which would be a total nothing burger. It's just that it's very likely. And I think I should be pointing this out to you from time to time. All right. How do the markets close today? And what are we thinking about here in terms of uh, where, where things are right now? Okay, let's start with Tesla, of course, which, as you undoubtedly know, went up $19.73 today. And in the after hours is now up $5.14 at $394.36 and seems to have finally stalled out. It's been going up a buck every little bit, you know, and now it seems to be stalling out around five bucks. All right, the Dow was down 123, NASDAQ up 159 for an all-time record, and the S&P up 15 for an all-time record. Um, the Magnificent Seven was mixed with Apple and NVIDIA down. As I mentioned, NVIDIA down $2.62, 2%. So that was a kind of a big one. And the rest up, and then the Kathy Woods were pretty much all up today. In particular, ARK K, for instance, up $2.52, and ARK G up $1.23. So those very strong uh, improvements today. All right, let's go ahead percentage-wise. Dow down 0.28, NASDAQ up 0.81, S&P up 0.25, and Tesla up a mere 5.34% and up 1.33 more for a total of 667 for the day. Whoa, holy mackerel in a single day. Okay, let's keep, <laughs> come on, we got to keep the celebration going here. <laughs> We've got the 10-year. The 10-year bonds were down 3.3% today. We are now under 4.15%. That is good. We got to keep that going. We get under four, get into, into the threes again. That would be fantastic. Let's hope that's going to take place. We've got the two-year down 4.8%. At 4.098, it's getting very close to going to the threes. And we have got the one month at 4.446, up a little bit today, actually. Um, needs it, That needs to come down a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, where's the oil? 
oil down more. We're down at uh, 67. Well, I think that's about where it was when I reported first thing this morning. So not a lot more activity today. Uh, we got a, a $4 difference with Brent. That's normal. Uh, the new normal <laughs> it used to be three. Now it seems like it's always four. Natural gas is uh, up a little bit um, on the day. Uh, $3 and 10 cents uh, holding above that $3 line. Uh, gold up 650 today, very, very much in the middle of its range. And silver actually came down a bit, 0.16% at $31.48, very much in the middle of its recent range. And then copper at four, almost 4.2, uh, $4.19 and a half cents. Um, uh, again, similar. Uh, the dollar unchanged today. Um, and Bitcoin uh, up 1582 back over 100,000 uh, at 100,444 at this exact moment. So that's a, uh, a strong day for Bitcoin to end, so so to speak, end the week. I mean, it goes on and on. It's you know you can play Bitcoin all week weekend long. All right, so that tells us everything we need to know. Um, I need you to do several things just to be thinking about here, liking and subscribing and notifying all that stuff. But Brian Wong will be on later today. Uh, as I mentioned, about 745. How is Tesla going to spend all that money? Uh, they, they haven't been spending very much money on new buildings and stuff. So what are they going to do? I have some ideas. Brian has some ideas. We will talk about that. I think you'll be fascinated by what we think is coming up next. Anyway, then you got Kathy Wood tomorrow. Uh, Larry and I will be talking about Kathy Wood. Um, that'll be around noon California time tomorrow. And then uh, CERN Basher, if you didn't watch that video last night, uh, it took you guys a while to find it. But when you finally found it, the numbers were pretty good. But if you didn't get a chance to see it, as always, CERN had plenty of very interesting charts and graphs. And, and then we had, a you know, about a good 15 minute discussion where we had no charts or graphs at all. That might have been the best part. I'm not sure. You let me know in the comments. All right. There you go. There's the CERN Basher video. That's You want to go check that out. Um, all right. So a fantastic day today. I want to say another you know high five to all you geniuses out there. Let's see if we can prove going forward that our we haven't lost our touch because, you know, once a genius. Well, not necessarily. All right. It's been great talking to you.